Let's dive right into the endocrine system. But before we do that, we need to talk about three types of signaling that occur in the body. So the first type of signaling is called autocrine signaling. Now autocrine signaling is when a cell communicates with itself. So the cell here is going to release hormones, just like that in the green. And the hormones are going to go on to bind to receptors located right back on that cell, just like that. So the cell is talking to itself. So the best way to remember this is think of auto and the word self. So the cell is releasing its own hormones that will affect itself. So an example of this are the T cells in our body. They release interleukins that bind right back to the cell. The second type of signaling is called paracrine signaling. Now paracrine signaling occurs between two cells. So here we have one cell and the other. I'm actually drawing two neurons right now. So an example of this are two neurons talking to one another. So the second neuron here is going to have receptors that will bind the hormones, or in this case, the neurotransmitters released by the first cell. And they will bind, and that's how we get this signal to go from the first cell right to the second one. So when you hear the word paracrine, think of the word pair, easy pair is two, so communication between two cells. And then the last type of signaling, if you can guess, it's not a trick question, is endocrine signaling. Now endocrine signaling occurs at a distance. So the best way to remember this is the letter D stands for distance. So D for distance. So there we have it. The endocrine system, actually, is how our brain communicates to, with different organs. So, for example, the brain will talk to the parathyroid gland, or the brain can talk to the pancreas, or the brain can talk to the ovaries, and all of this occurs via the bloodstream. So the brain is going to release hormones that will go on to the bloodstream and flow to those organs and relay the message to that organ to cause some change in the body. And the whole point of the endocrine system is to maintain balance, or another word we call homeostasis. Okay, so you're probably wondering how all of this communication between the brain and the body occurs. Well, let's start off with the basics. So the hypothalamus is a gland located in the brain. It's actually what we consider the master gland of the brain, the master control gland. So it's located in the forebrain section, right above the pituitary gland and right below the thalamus. And the hypothalamus exerts its effects on another gland that we call the pituitary gland, which I'm going to draw out. So the pituitary gland has two lobes. This is called the anterior pituitary because it's in the front, which is what anterior means. And then the lobe right back here is the posterior pituitary because it's located in the back. Now, let's recall that the hypothalamus talks to the pituitary gland. And can anyone guess what type of communication occurs between both of these if they're both located in the brain? If you guessed paracrine, then you are correct. So par paracrine signaling occurs between these two. Now, these two glands talk to each other and relay their messages from the hypothalamus down to each of the pituitary gland's components. So the anterior pituitary gland secretes seven hormones, 
and I learned an easy way to remember them when I was studying for the MCAT by knowing the mnemonic flat peg. Two words, flat peg. So the F stands for FSH, L for LH, A for ACTH, T for TSH, P for prolactin, E for endorphins, and G for GH. And all seven of these hormones are actually stimulating hormones. So that means increased release of hormones from the hypothalamus will act on the anterior pituitary and then cause an increased release of these hormones. Except there's one hormone, the oddball of the bunch, the P, prolactin, that doesn't follow this, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So getting on with the posterior pituitary, we have two hormones. We have oxytocin, and the other is called ADH, or another name, vasopressin, which definitely know for the MCAT, because they tried tricking you by using vasopressin, but just know that ADH and vasopressin are the same thing. You've probably heard of them a lot in the excretory system or when you were talking about the kidney. So going back, I said the hypothalamus is the master gland. So that means in order to exert its effects on the anterior pituitary, it has to send some sort of hormone. So think of the hypothalamus as the president. The president is watching over all these other components of its system, the endocrine system. But in order to talk to the next head honcho, which we would call the pituitary gland, it has to send some sort of messenger, or what we call a releasing factor or stimulating hormone. So I'm going to run through an example using CRF. So the hypothalamus is going to release CRF, which is what we call corticotropin releasing factor. So this is the president's messenger. The messenger is going to run down to the anterior pituitary and relay the message and say, boom, you need to send out ACTH. So that's the anterior pituitary's message. It has to send out the next messenger or another hormone we call ACTH. So it got its directions from the president to release ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now ACTH does a lot of the grunt work because now it has to travel all the way down long distances into the bloodstream and attach to the organ, the organ at a distance. So think of the president up in Washington, D.C. and it has to communicate to its messengers all the way in California. So it's going to travel all the way, all the way down the bloodstream, all the way across the country, and it has to reach its final destination on the kidneys. Now the kidneys have a gland called the adrenal gland, and they're located right on top of the kidneys. So the ACTH is going to send its message to the adrenal glands, and once the adrenal glands get the message, they will release the final product cortisol, the final message, into the bloodstream. Now, the beauty of the endocrine system is that it has to keep each of its organs and tissues and hormones that it releases in check. So that means that when one of the levels of hormones are high, the endocrine system has to compensate for that. So increased so or excessive levels of hormones can be detrimental. So to keep these amounts in check within a healthy range, the hypothalamus and pituitary are both subject to what we call feedback inhibition. So when cortisol gets too high, it's going to relay its message back to the anterior pituitary and say, hey, stop releasing ACTH. I don't need any more of myself being released. There's already enough of me. So it's going to inhibit ACTH release. Also, when cortisol levels are high, it's going to call back to the president, the hypothalamus, and say, hey, please stop releasing CRF. There's enough of me. Turn off CRF release, and it's going to inhibit CRF production. And that is what we call negative feedback.